Welcome to the Maryland Robotics Center, the central hub for interdisciplinary robotics research at the University of Maryland. This video will show you a bit of who we are and some of the projects we're working on. So, without further ado, let's begin. The main mission of the Maryland Robotics Center is to advance robotic systems, the underlying component technologies and applications of robotic systems through research and education that is interdisciplinary in nature and based on a systems approach. All of our research fits into one or more of eight research focus areas. Autonomous systems, bio-inspired robotics, cognitive robotics, extreme robotics, human-robot interaction, medical robots, miniature robots, and multi-robot systems. Autonomous systems are robots or robotic systems that operate completely on their own by planning or programming. Any robot or robotic system that is inspired by natural behaviors or forms, like plants or animals, is called bio-inspired robotics. Cognitive robotics are robots using artificial intelligence algorithms to think, learn, and react to tasks. Whether it's on the surface of Mars or a subterranean world, extreme robotics research create robots capable of operating in hostile environments. Human-robot interaction research seeks to create platforms that improve human-robot collaboration, communication, and modeling. Medical robots are used for surgery, rehabilitation, medicine delivery, and other medical procedures. Miniature robots are tiny robots, sometimes the size of ants. Multi-robot systems are swarms of robots that work together to perform a task, such as pursuing a target or exploring an area. Now, let's get to the most important question. What exactly is a robot? Well, there are a large amount of definitions out there, so let's just say for now that a robot is a computer-controlled or programmable machine capable of performing complex tasks. How are robots made, you might ask? As you might expect, the process to build a robot varies. But all methods fall within a basic five-step process. One, create the robot concept. Ask, what is the purpose of the robot? Two, do research and design the robot. During this step, you may use tools such as computer-aided design software, simulations, or modeling equations. Three, manufacture the robot. Robots can be made through assembly methods, 3D printing, molding, and even sewing. It's fun to explore the variety of ways to build a robot. Four, build the controlled structure and the computer code. Many robots have onboard computers called microprocessors. These need to be programmed in order to control robotic behavior. And finally, five, test the system. Yes, this is the inevitable part of building. Experiments allow the builder to see the robot's true capabilities. This may also lead to a system that breaks. And then it's back to the drawing board. Now let's look at some of the research projects at the Maryland Robotics Center. RoboRaven is an example of a bio-inspired robot because researchers applied the principle of bird flight to determine how the robot should fly. RoboRaven generates its lift and thrust by flapping its wings. It is highly maneuverable and able to perform hairpin turns and dives. After testing, RoboRaven was updated to include solar panels that could capture the sun's energy and charge the battery. Solar panels were embedded directly into the wing and thus became the only flapping UAV wing that could both propel RoboRaven and generate energy. RoboRaven version 5 added another improvement, rear propellers. After that, RoboRaven could fly faster, higher, and with a greater payload. It could also sustain acrobatic movements longer. Other Maryland Robotics Center researchers have been working to improve robotic manufacturing techniques through 3D printing. In the Bio-Inspired Advanced Manufacturing Lab, or the BAM Lab, we try to use micro and nanoscale 3D printing technologies to solve biomedical challenges. And so in the context of robotics, we're trying to create an entirely new generation of soft prosthetics that are built using 3D printing. 
The way that we build our soft robotic systems is that we use a special type of 3D printer. And what makes this type of 3D printing special is that it's just like a color printer, but instead of printing just one page, we're printing multiple pages, one on top of another. And what makes it great for soft robotics is that we can print different types of materials, like soft, flexible materials and hard plastic materials that are fully integrated so that after the printing process, in a single print run, we have something like this. What we have here is a tank that's 50 feet across and 25 feet deep, and we use it to simulate space. There are only six tanks like this in the world. This is the only neutral buoyancy facility in the world on a university campus, and it's one of only two active facilities in the United States. We're very pleased to have this unique facility. We put our robots in the water. We actually put people in the water, either directly as if they were inside a habitat or wearing spacesuits. We're actually developing robotic systems that operate in many different environments to try to ensure that we can have the technology available as we advance outwards into space, that we'll have robotic systems ready to go along with the humans. One of the unique things about this laboratory is everything you see here is designed and built here almost entirely by the students. So if you look at a robot arm like this that was originally developed to fly in the space shuttle, it was developed by students and we still operate it using graduate students and undergraduates. We have so many other research projects at the Maryland Robotics Center and we're always pushing the boundaries to create better robots for more applications. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed this video. Goodbye for now. Keep having fun, keep learning, and keep creating.